Hello buddy, it's Wyvern here with a video to cover today's news. Obviously, the moment a lot of us have been waiting for for quite a while uh, has arrived and the latest DLC for Total War Warhammer 2 was finally announced, The Twisted and the Twilight. And much has been anticipated for a while now. This is the DLC, of course, featuring the Wood Elves against the Skaven. And this has kind of been the speculation for quite a while. And so finally we got a trailer, we got a little bit of a rundown, and in this video we're going to be looking at the trailer first, looking at all the awesome cool animations that CA has put together for us, and then looking at some of the information that is currently available and just seeing what we can glean from this early little sneak peek that they're providing us. So without further ado, let's dive right in and see what we got in store for us. With the setting sun, foul abominations gnaw at our mother's roots, consume with endless hunger. But just as one season brings death, a new shall bring life. So, that trailer definitely had a lot to see, a lot of visual spectacle. Uh, though I must say, before we dive into the actual meat of the contents of, that are coming in this DLC, uh, I don't think that was one of the stronger trailers for CA. Uh, perhaps it's more that I'm a sucker for humor and uh, obvious parodies of various other various films, whether it's science fiction, um, superhero movies and all that sort of thing. I'd always found it funny just to see what parody CA came up with. Uh, I didn't think there was anything as uh, blatantly humorous in this, so perhaps that's why I'm a little bit disappointed, but I do think the trailer got across the point. We did see uh, all the upcoming units, uh, everything that should be coming in with this DLC, and of course that is the most important thing really for a trailer, to show, to show what's coming. And um, I think it's interesting. Uh, that I, I think that some omissions are strange. I think the positioning of some units on the roster is also a bit interesting. But uh, definitely interested to see how things pan out. And some some of the additions are definitely definitely exciting. So going through here, first and foremost, obviously we're getting two new legendary lords. We're getting Throt the Unclean, as well as the Sisters of Twilight, Nystra and Arahan, and. Um, most likely, they are going to be getting both their eagle as well as their dragon mount, I would assume. So we'll actually have a legendary legendary dragon there and a legendary eagle as well, which is pretty awesome. Um, more interestingly, for, for me at least, is the fact that Ariel's actually coming in as a legendary hero. And we see this mentioned here as uh, in the description of new units and heroes that are coming for the Skaven and Wood Elves. Ariel's actually listed as a hero. So she's not a legendary lord and this actually kind of surprised me. Uh, I had anticipated that Ariel would be uh, the free LC legendary lord because I felt that uh, Drisha or Drika, however you pronounce it, um, the the um, ang very angry Branchwraith would 
not really be that fitting for a legendary lord. Uh, I, I felt she would be kind of lacking, but um, clearly CA does not see it that way. And in fact, she is going to be the free LC addition tacking on. And we'll discuss that in just a little bit there. Um, but she's going to be the free LC addition tacking on to this DLC, which is honestly kind of neat. Um, I do like the fact that because of this, we're going to be able to see Ariel fighting alongside Orion, her consort, which kind of, I think CA might have realized, uh, especially with the issue with Isabella and... Um, the issue that we currently have with Isabella and uh, Vlad, where you can't actually have them fighting side by side in uh, multiplayer, and it's kind of difficult in campaign even, because uh, oftentimes you don't really want two armies in the same spot to reinforce each other. Um, and I think perhaps he is trying to avoid that, trying to allow you to role play a little bit and have have fun in that sense. And um, so I do think it's neat to see Ariel coming in. And I and. On the Skaven front, we're actually seeing Gorich coming in, and that's also a legendary hero for, uh, character for the uh, Skaven. I um, guess he's a hero. <laughs> he's basically a Chaos Warrior brain strapped to a Rat Ogre, for those of you who are unsure about the lore there, which is kind of funny or messed up. I don't know how, how, however you want to see it. But um, I, do, I do like the fact that uh, C is definitely going... Hard in the paint here with this DLC for some legendary heroes, uh, and it gives me hope for the future. There's definitely a, few, a lot of characters still remaining for uh, a lot of, honestly, a lot of factions for the High Elves, Dark Elves, Lizard Men, Empire. All these factions have a lot of legendary heroes left over, and and of course, just about every faction has legendary heroes left over, and they're not going to be fit to make legendary lords. CM might not really want that many factions. It's difficult to get more factions in, but the fact that we're seeing more of these legendary heroes gives me hope that we'll see more legendary heroes elsewhere. Uh, it shows that he's committing to this more and more. Uh, initially, we had almost no legendary heroes. We had the pseudo legendary clan Angren ancestors and the Green Knight, but now we do. We are going to be seeing. We've seen a Felix and Gotrek added, of course, um, and and we have, and of course you got to remember we had the uh, Kemler Krell situation where Krell was added as a summon, which is kind of crappy. So. Uh, I really do like this expansion into Legendary Heroes he has been doing with these past few patches. And I, and I do find this very very intriguing. Uh, there's also a bunch of incoming units. And we will discuss these more on the Steam page. Because the Steam page actually goes into more detail on what these units are and what they do. So, uh, yeah, we'll actually go into more detail on those there. Some neat stuff. Brood Horrors, Mutant Rat Ogres, Packmasters, and Wolf Rats for the Skaven. As well as, of course, Orich. And hilariously enough, for the Wood Elves, we're getting the Zoats. The Zoats. Oh my god. They're a throwback uh, to, I'm not even sure, I think, it, I believe it is was third edition for Warhammer Fantasy. I'm kind of surprised CA dug those out of the, um, dug those out of the uh, archives for this DLC. I guess I shouldn't be surprised that it like one of the only unique units related in any way, shape, or form to the Wood Elf roster that remained, and you, otherwise all the units that would remain were basically just Wood Elf variants, so... I kind of understand from that perspective. At the same time, it's a unit that really, in my opinion, aesthetically doesn't suit the Wood Elves, and we'll discuss it a little more in a bit. We're also getting great Stagonites, Blade Singers, Spell Weavers, and of course Ariel, as mentioned before. And of course, Wood Elves are getting an update. Um, now, obviously, there is a pre-order right now. You can get 10% off until December 3rd when the DLC is releasing if you pre-order. So the usual sort of thing. Um, Blah blah blah. <laughs> the usual information. Um, yeah, mods aren't gonna stay. You guys will know the drill. We we all know how this drill goes. And uh, just some in generic information in regards to the DLC and a repetition of what the new units. In case the initial list was not adequate, um, you get it again. Now some new mechanics are coming in. Uh, Throt as well as the Sisters Twilight do get a little bit of spice to their campaign. Um, and in the case of Throt, he does get the Flesh Lab. I assume this is going to be similar to Ikit Claw's um, laboratory where you can upgrade units, except rather than upgrading your tech units, you're upgrading your monster units. And uh, so you can shape and customize your units with augments. Uh, it might also apply to infantry units as well. I could see it applying there. Uh, but regardless, you can get some crazy combos going, supposedly. But it could also make your units perform worse. Uh, so... It should be interesting to see. It could be a mixture of. It could also be a mixture of Ikit's mechanic with the scrap mechanic for uh, green skins. I'll definitely be curious to see just how this pans out. But I'm definitely excited to have more customization options for Skaven and for their monsters, especially. Just just be, just be fun. Spice things up a bit. Um, 
And uh, there's also growth fat where you can grow bigger and nastier monsters so with, by recycling units, which I do find pretty entertaining. It's, it's very scaven -y. And um, I'm definitely excited to see that in action. Uh, for the sisters, I think it's a little bit less of an exciting uh, setup. You get uh, the Forge of Daith, which allows you to create unique items um, or upgrade existing items via a, a dilemma system. I think that sounds kind of lackluster. Um, it, it sounds like a watered down version almost of, of some of the mechanics we, we already have for, say, Throt, uh, or not Throt, sorry, for uh, Grom and new factions like that, or uh, really the uh, Forge of All that we get with, uh, or the Right of All that you get with the uh, High Elves, where you get to choose an item. That's kind of what it sounds like, except it's. An entire faction mechanic, which sounds a bit lackluster, but perhaps I'll be surprised pleasantly with this, and it's it's going to be something more in depth and uh, more interesting. Uh, free content, of course, Dr uh, Drisha as well as uh, Skaven Chieftain as a hero. Now, Skaven Chieftain is basically a budget Empire captain, um, at least in the lore and in the tabletop. He's not a very good anything, uh, so. I assume he'll be a dirt cheap fighting character, probably akin to a goblin big boss, honestly. Um, but it could be interesting to see him, and, and honestly for the Skaven, just to have a little bit of an extra leadership bubble, just to be able to goon a little bit more effectively, maybe if he gets some mount options. I don't know if he'd get a bone breaker, but uh, some of the other characters here are actually getting uh, mounts, as we'll see later. Uh, perhaps, perhaps we'll see something cool there, and uh, perhaps he will be able to be a bit more mobile, and uh, perhaps provide some good... Some good Good, uh, just straight up punchy support rather than the assassin who's kind of a hybrid support character. Um, he's like the assassin definitely does damage, but he's not necessarily uh, that sturdy, and uh, he definitely a lot of his uh, power comes from his utility with uh, things such as the trophy heads. Uh, and of course, we are getting the legendary Lord Jadrisha, so yeah, that's pretty awesome. I'm gonna be curious to see. Obviously, I expect her to be a bit like Durthu, very much tree tree themed, um, but crazy and evil. And uh, definitely, definitely excited to see that. And obviously, uh, the old world update coming with the DLC is the update to the Wood Elves. Um, and rework of Amber. This was obviously anticipated and expected, and not really a surprise. Uh, Amber is no longer going to be required for tech or buildings, with the exception of some new technologies. Um, and it's no longer gained from controlling territory. It's instead awarded for healing forests and. Uh, it appears that C is just adding a bunch of forest regions to both mortal empires as well as vortex. So there's actually much more regions for what else to expand to and try to conquer and control. And in the process, they're restoring the Oak of Ages. So I think that's much more thematic. It's much more neat rather than what we previously had where it was kind of, you could either play a super campy method where you just sit on your bum in the woods and try to make alliances. Or you could basically play like green chaos and conquer the entire map, just turning it green. Uh, and that's kind of how I like to play. I was a very aggressive Wood Elf player. I'd just go on a rampage, annihilating everything in my path. I know some other players were much more fond of camping on their bum. Uh, whatever floats your goat. But I like that this promotes being proactive, but also uh, is much more thematic. It doesn't feel like you're just willy-nilly annihilating the world, uh, which is what it previously, previously the Amber Mechanic encouraged. Um, and uh, we do get some rituals to build up and save the forest so I, I do think that's pretty cool um, and uh, it also looks like there's going to be some unique forest encounters that'll provide some narrative choices help let the player choose how they want to approach this uh, recovery of the forest and uh, as you can see here additional regions were added so just in case you thought mortal empires was a little too small a little too uh lacking uh, well there's gonna be more to it and uh because there's gonna be more to it i'm not entirely sure where we're gonna be seeing our new legendary characters starting. Uh, I do feel pretty confident saying that uh, that Throt, at least on Mortal Empires, will start and help it. But uh, everyone, everything else, I'm not really confident about. I could see it. I could see the because keep in mind those regions are being added, and CA has previously uh, placed changed factions location uh, when they implemented them as a playable faction. So uh, just because there's currently some Wood Elf outposts in Nordland. And of course, Wood Elf outposts down south in um, the uh, what is it, the Hunters Encampment, I believe, or something along those lines. Uh, 
just because there's outposts there doesn't necessarily mean that's where the sisters are going to end up. They could have kept position somewhere else. Or the same with Rudrisha for that matter. Um, there's also been change to the deep roots. So now rather than under, just having a underway knockoff, it appears that the Wood Elves, are, I assume, it, this, they're not going to lose their other, they are going to lose their underway. Maybe they won't lose their underway knockoff, but I assume they will. Uh, now the Wood Elves are going to be able to transport their armies between forest regions, which is pretty nuts. That allows you to have an insane amount of versatility and flexibility. If you need to defend far off regions, you can flex from home turf all the way out to some far off region. Uh, let's say it's the forest in Nordland. That's obviously very far away from Athel Lauren. Even with maxed out movement speed, you're not going to be getting there fast. So having the benefit of instant teleportation uh, would be very nifty for sure. And I, I, it should make it much more defensible or much more defense, much more manageable for the Wood Elves when you're, um, when you're limited on your armies. And that should help, especially on Legendary and very hard difficulty where upkeep costs get pretty insane. Now going on to Steam, and this is probably what a lot of you guys were looking forward to, uh, is the units. Um, and we do get a little bit of an idea of what the faction objectives are going to be, at least in the Vortex campaign. Uh, the Sisters of Twilight are trying to uh, craft a ritual to seal a rift, so this does seem pretty akin to the current Vortex race for every other faction, so kind of sense, sounds pretty generic, though could be wrong there. Uh, on the flip side though, uh, Throt does seem to have a more uh, more uh, amusing objective, trying to focus on wiping out the elves, and perhaps an objective more akin to say Grom, uh, with a f looking towards a final sort of battle where you wipe out your opponent for the uh, for the DLC, uh, whereas Thrat does not seem to be a primary concern for the Wood Elves. Um, now, as mentioned before, there is, of course, a Forge of Date system to upgrade the sisters and their equipment, um, and there are some neat units coming in. Of course, Ariel coming in, and there's actually some great images, and we're going to be looking at those in just a jiffy, uh, which might give us an idea of what, I, of what abilities she's going to have. So, Ariel... Um, He's going to be recruitable as a legendary hero. How this is going to work for every faction, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, but obviously, she's a spellcaster. She's got a mixed lore of magic. And um, she's a decent melee combatant, too. I don't believe she has any mounts in the tabletop. Uh, now she does have some crazy beetle in Age of Sigmar. But in the original fantasy tabletop, I don't believe she had any mounts. So she'll probably be a foot slash fairy wing lord only uh spell weaver which is your spellcaster lord now interestingly enough in tabletop the spell weaver actually had access to all eight generic lords of magic plus dark and high so he actually had more with more magic selection than high or dark elves did for their primary for their primary caster or for their lord cat level caster it appears that CA is not gone with that. They are going to keep the uh, Wood Elves limited to their initial life, beasts, and shadows. So we're not getting death, light, uh, li uh, li uh, or we're not getting uh, death, light, uh, fire, heavens, or anything like that. But uh, we will be getting dark and high magic kind of encompassing that. Um, the Wood Elf... Uh, association with both sides of the magic spectrum. Um, they're kind of the balance in between the dark and high elves and uh, so that that is kind of neat granted dark and high magic both kind of niche so it's not going to be the biggest game changer i don't think i think light would have actually been insanely good for what else uh though i can kind of see why say doesn't want to give them an easy on-demand net but uh especially with way watchers <laughs> but uh it should still be fun to have more spell selection and having a proper spell level like uh spellcaster lord or mobile spellcaster lord we're getting zoets so these guys are our monstrous beasts who have access to bound Lore of Life spells. Now I don't know what Lore of Life spells these will be. My assumption would be that Earthblood is one of them just because it's a cheap and like staple life spell, but I could be wrong. Uh, it would be my assumption. Maybe the other one, something like Awakening of the Wood. Uh, I don't think it would be Shield of Thorns just because it would be redundant with the um, Sister of the Thorn. We we'll already have that in the Curse of Honor. So I'd assume it's either uh, Awakening of the Wood maybe flesh the stone i can't see it being dollars below that would be insane uh so probably flesh the stone and i definitely not regrowth so pro i would assume flesh the stone or awakening of the wood um otherwise um they do look like dragon ogres i would assume they're going to perform like dragon ogres uh though 
perhaps um, they'll be a bit different. Um, probably more expensive because they do have those bounce spells. Great Stagnites, so heavy Wood Elf Cav. Now in the trailer it appeared that they don't come in very big units, so I would assume they might come in and be a Monster's Cav unit, sort of like Demigriff Knights. I would assume they're going to be AP. Um, and uh, they do have a kind of a, a glow to them, uh, an ethereal glow almost. And um, perhaps we can find one of the images here. And they, they appear to have a bit of an ethereal glow. And um, I guess in this image here they don't really have much of an ethereal glow. So. I don't know if they'll have any sort of enhanced physical resistance or be any more insane than they uh, appear, but um, you can kind of see here, it looks almost like a Green Knight Elven variant, but uh, I don't know if they'll have some enhanced physical resist there, but should be very useful. Wood Elves not having an AP Cav has been a killer for them for a while, so if they have a light AP Cav, you can actually give them a good fighting chance against units like Knights of Blazing Sun, Rail Knights, um, Dragon Princes especially, that could be huge. Uh, finally, Blade Singers, um, elite war dancers, uh, but they're sword armed. I don't really know what to expect here, honestly. Um, war dancers in tabletop were actually one of the most elite infantry in the game. They were actually more elite than sword masters. Cost the same per per model as Phoenix Guard, which is pretty insane. Uh, they were they were a very expensive unit, and they got massively downgraded going to Total War Warhammer. Uh, they were made a mid tier infantry. Where in tabletop, they're a top tier infantry. Uh, so I don't really know what to expect there. Uh, maybe they'll get AP. Um, maybe they'll have insane... I can't imagine obscene stats because their stats already are pretty good. So AP is what I would expect. Uh, I don't know if they'd get missile block like Swordmasters. That would feel a little redundant. Um, maybe more dances because that is very much their theme. But uh, I can't really think of what they'd, what they'd get. That would be unique. Because um, sword dancers are... Uh, are a very glass cannon unit and uh, moving away from that design I, they're obviously I can't imagine them being well armored I can't imagine them they could have maybe have more physical resist sort of like death runners or something like 30 percent Th that would be kind of what I expect maybe more physical resist maybe AP but I, I can't really think of many ways a sword unit would be too different from the base variant um, well being different enough uh, but also not redundant with Wild Rangers and generic war dancers. I don't know. It's tough to tough to gauge there. Now for Throt, obviously we, he's going to be able to forge um, units. He does he does have a uh, legendary hero Gorich, <laughs> and um, yeah, he's 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 a chaos warrior with his brain stuck onto a rat ogre. So it should be, should be fun to see how he performs in battle. A Packmaster is coming in as a new hero unit, um, and this guy can actually be mounted on a Brood Horror. The Brood Horror was a Forge World unit, uh, which I do believe has pretty crazy, I believe it had pretty crazy regeneration, much akin to, say, the Hell Pit Abomination. Um, so I do believe it might have actually had too horrible to die as well. So uh, should be interesting to see. Supposedly it's fast moving, so I don't know if that means like a Vargul fast moving or like fast moving at like a rat ogre 60 speed um, because that's a different very different things there but uh regardless it is a mount option as well as a single entity monster you can bring and uh, that's going to spice up skaven options it's going to make their shock armies even more effective and it's kind of going to give you i think um anti single entity unit to go alongside your doom wheels and doom flares that are wrecking your opponent's infantry line so could be cool to see uh, you're also getting a mutant rat ogre, which is a large single entity monster. Probably, basically a uh, probably basically a a, a uh, the um, big old rat ogre, the bone breaker that the um, warlord gets. That's what I'd expect. Um, and I actually skimmed over it here, but uh, the pack master does get to summon wolf rats, and there's actually wolf rats uh, as a as a unit, and these guys are probably going to be like hounds. And they are both a poison and AP variety, which is pretty nuts. Uh, Skaven, once again, getting having all the goodies lavished on top of them. Uh, no idea about ROIs from either of these, but definitely looks like the units will be interesting. There's definitely some I just do not get, like the Blade Singers. I feel kind of redundant with War Dancers and Wildwood Rangers, but I guess it could be just a souped up variety, kind of like Chosen or just straight up better um, Chaos Warriors. Um, I could see that. Uh, I'm surprised we're not getting Storm Fiends. That's really the big, big shocker for me here. I'm kind of surprised by the Zoets, admittedly, but 
I can get where they're coming from. Coming from. I'm surprised there's no Storm Fiends. Uh, we're getting a Mutant Rat Ogre. We're getting Gorich. We're kind of in that vein, but no Storm Fiends. Kind of odd. I would I would have expected those the weapon armed Rat Ogres to make it a showing. Uh, much more so than a Mutant Rat Ogre, which just seems like an odd choice in comparison. I'm kind of kind of a little disappointed that we're not getting Storm Fiends. Uh, though I guess the Balancing Nightmare would be there. And maybe that's what CA wants to avoid. They don't want to give Skaven a uh, heavy-duty, um, monstrous missile unit. But uh, I, I do kind of wish we we saw Storm Fiends. Maybe, maybe later, DLC or something. But maybe once Thankwall makes the showing. But uh, definitely weird to not see that with this DLC. Also, no Vermin Lord, which uh, I'm less surprised by. I feel like that's something that might pop up once Thankwall finally makes an appearance. Um, obviously some of you guys are probably rolling your eyes that Skaven are going to get another DLC, but I feel like Skaven might have enough material for one more DLC. Um, though I do feel like CA is skimping out in some units here with the Mutant Rat Ogre in particular to make that extra DLC happen. I don't know. Now going over the going over the um, Images we have here, we can actually see some of what's coming. So we can see uh, not, uh, the what appears to be the spawn of the uh, sisters on Mortal Empires. It actually appears that they are spawned all the way down in the southwest, which is pretty insane. That's rather far away from the um, from where most of the action is. Really, um, I'm kind of surprised they're, they're getting a spawn that far away. You can also see their starting roster here. Uh, the sisters actually come in as a single unit and it looks like they're coming in as an eagle and if we look here it's turn two that means in my opinion that they just start on an eagle um, maybe they have a foot version that you can swap to kind of like our ponce and bretonian lords just all start on a horse you can downgrade them to foot so maybe they've got a foot version but maybe they might they're just stuck on an eagle uh, which i do believe they are on tabletop it's either eagle or dragon but we'll see uh, Stags clearly are a monstrous cavalry, as mentioned. Uh, so they're probably 32 models on Ultra. I mean, it's going to be 24 like demigriffs on large. So it's pretty neat. Definitely excited to see that. Uh, high mass AP probably. Uh, monstrous cav seems like a lot of fun. For Wood Elves especially, I think it will cover major roster holes. Um, and they do look a little ethereal there. So I don't know if they're going to be resistant, extra resistant to physical attacks or something. Um, obviously, we do see the Packmaster and the hideous Brood Horror there. It looks terrifying. Um, not not very cute at all. Sisters atop uh, the the dragon. I believe it's Gwai here or uh, Gwindred or something like that. I I know I know there were, there's some G names in there, and uh, I might be confusing it with Lord of the Rings at this point because <laughs> I'm pretty sure Gwai here is what well, is the King of Eagles in Lord of the Rings, but or uh, the uh, maybe the Silmarillion. Oh man, the confusion reigns. But uh, regardless, very cool to see the dragon and the sisters riding along on top of Ariel. And we get an idea of her spells here, which is pretty neat. We do get Word of Pain, Shield of Thorns, decent spells there. Apotheosis for the healing. Um, and it appears she's casting Soul Stealer. Uh, if, if we look at the uh, if we look at the bar here, it actually appears that the units are being impacted by Soul Stealer there. So. Uh, that might be the final the final spell there. Um, she gets uh, Tempest as well as Blowers Below. So a decent spell selection. Having Tempest as Wood Elves is definitely not bad. You can already get it with a high caster, but getting it on a hero as a support tool could definitely be nifty. Uh, not the greatest healings, which kind of surprised me a little bit, but... Uh, Definitely cool to see a, a mixed cocktail of dark life and uh, uh, high magic taking the stage. And uh, as, as kind of expected, the uh, Dragon Ogre Boys, the Zoets, coming in a 12-man unit on large. Wardancer Elite seems to be coming in at 75 models like the normal Wardancers. Unfortunately, we don't get the CHP or anything. Uh, there is a unit that was not mentioned here as well, and that is... I, I don't... It's got a bow. So it's either... So the unit's not mentioned. Uh, spells. Actually, look at that. We're discovering something new, folks. But it's not a well. It's a it's a hero. So I want to say Glade Captain, uh, uh, and the reason I say that is because 
the only other hero I could think of for what else is Shadow Dance is a Shadow Dancer, and the Shadow Dancer doesn't have a bow, I believe. War Dancers didn't have bows in tabletop, I don't think. And uh, I don't think Shadow Dancers did either. I would have to open up my book for that and see. But I don't think Shadow Dancers had bows. So the only other character I could think of is the Glade Captain, though I'm not sure if uh, C is gonna if if that is the case uh, here. If but I, I think it's Glade Captain is what I would assume, and it would make sense as a fairly cheap reskin. Though I guess either a Shadow Dancer or a Glade Captain could be a cheap reskin. Um, we can see more of that monstrous menagerie charging into the Wood Elf lines there. Um, a very fancy scene for sure, though. Doesn't really show too much as far as the new units go, I don't think. Um, looks like there's some Packmasters here. It's the blob of them charging in. I don't know if there's, there's going to be a unit of them because it doesn't. Because if we look down here, um, it's a hero unit. I don't see anything about a entire unit of them. Over here, what appears to be uh, either Gorich or I believe this is Gorich um, fighting a uh one of the new blade dancers and uh because i believe the mutant rat ogre is a bit different in aesthetic ariel alongside her stag boys though this actually looks this might be different they might be different units if we this might actually not not be the great stag riders uh, these guys seem much greener perhaps there's a regiment of renown version is what it is uh, and you can see the blade dancer there. Uh, the only real difference seems to be the hairdo uh, and fancier swords that glow. But um, otherwise, I, I guess they don't wear the long dresses. But so I guess they are pretty different. But, uh, still, ultimately, seem to be a reskin war dancer. And these guys seem to be a reskin dragon ogre. See the spell we were in action there. Uh, and some poor clan rats in the mix. Throughout over here, it uh, does seem to start, and you can see some of the modifications there. Uh, on his screens. does seem to start with a brood horror and uh, I'm not actually sure. I believe these are probably the wolf rats over there that he's modified. So pretty cool to see the fat boy himself and uh, we can see the sisters of Twilight here with quite the army or air aid and uh, so we're seeing the different wolf, wolf rats down here. Pretty cool and I do believe we're seeing the some of the souped up rat ogres over there. So this is definitely Gorich. Uh, and they do look like a fearsome bunch. It does appear that Throt, or uh, does appear that Gorich actually has a uh, vortex spell bound to him, which is pretty neat. Probably something disruptive and centered on him, uh, kind of like a, um, kind of like a uh, Ark of Sotek. But uh, definitely looks fun. So that's what we got so far. Um, there's definitely some content in here that was not mentioned in the trailer or in the notes that we have so far um so it does appear we're gonna get a glade captain in there somewhere i don't know if it's gonna be slapped on as a free as in the free lc as the part of the wood elf rework because it's a cheap upgrade uh or maybe it's like the black orc <laughs> big boss that was released later i don't know but this is this is a new hero this is definitely not a way stalker it's you can see there's a mix of spear and bow there if it was something like the uh it's something like the handmaidens this would actually be incredibly useful for the wood elves just to give them more anti-large punch against cavalry but I do think it's the Glade Captain. So definitely some cool stuff coming. Definitely a bit surprised we're missing certain units and shocked that we're seeing certain units like the Zoet and surprised by the positioning of some units. But all in all, I think it's looking like a neat patch. Definitely looking forward to covering it in the coming days and uh, perhaps weeks up to release. We do, of course, have a uh, grand total of two weeks leading up. So should be fun. And... Uh, Hope you guys enjoyed. As usual, leave your own thoughts, opinions, comments, and critiques down below. I'll respond as soon as I can. Do thank you all for watching, and we'll see you all in the next one. Bye for now.